Oke, terima kasih. Untuk pertanyaan berikutnya, Kak, mohon maaf, kami prioritaskan dulu memberikan waktu saudara-saudara kita yang non-Muslim. Ada dari kalangan kelompok bapak-bapak? Ada ibu-ibu non-Muslim? Kami persilahkan. Hi, good evening. Um, thank you for welcome. coming tonight. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay. Okay. Obviously, I'm possibly one of the few non-Muslims here. Um, so I want to ask about opening dialogue between different religions and even different denominations within religions. Um, in my experience among people that I've met, most religions encourage very similar core values about good things. Of course, don't kill, don't steal, love your family, so on. Um, but a lot of people focus on small details and differences. And when you have so many different leaders and different systems saying that anyone who believes differently is being deceived by Satan, how can you get people to listen to each other if they are taught that just listening to another viewpoint will lead them down the wrong path. How can we open up more listening and communication? That's a wonderful question. And first of all, I want to congratulate you on having the nerve to be the only Muslim, non-Muslim who stood up and said, hey, I'm not a Muslim. Uh, you're, you're most welcome. And Thank I'm you. happy for this chance to talk with you. Uh, can I hear your name again? Sure. My name is Heather. Heather. Yes. So, Heather, if I can ask you, what, did not, what religion are you? Um, currently, I'm an agnostic from a Christian background. My father was Southern Baptist and my mother was Catholic. That's a, a winner right there, isn't it? <laughs> where, where did you grow up? I grew up in Florida, in the USA. Where, what city? Gainesville. Uh, Gainesville. Yeah. Oh. Okay, I know games. I was over there during the, right after the recent hurricane in Florida. Okay. Yeah, we visited over there, university. Did yes, you go, did you go to the university? I did. My family and me and many of the other people I grew up with. Did yes. you meet any of the Muslims there? Uh, a few, yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, I'm very, very happy. This is a great occasion for us to have a chance to talk to you. But uh, as far as your question goes, there are a number of organizations, Muslim organizations on the planet, who are working very hard to do exactly what you said. At the same time, there are setbacks coming from the same people you also described, who get into these little petty issues, and especially groups, small groups maybe, but still there, who don't want any dialogue with anybody else. But I would like this opportunity to expound on something I mentioned earlier from the Quran, which tells us about people of the book. You grew up in a home, Catholic and Baptist, probably played the ping pong ball back and forth like that several times mm -hmm. in these discussions, heated discussions, mm -hmm. that I can imagine would come from the Catholic and the Protestant, yes. especially somebody being a Baptist minister. That, uh, that's, it, it's too cliche. But in the Quran, it's telling us that there are people from the people of the book who have iman. All we need to do is just open doors for them to see more about it. You also mentioned agnostic. This, by definition, and I'm not telling you how to think, I'm just telling you how we perceive that word. Mm -hmm. Someone who believes there could be a God, not giving up on that, but not particularly ascribing themselves to any particular belief or faith. You know, maybe, maybe not, it is what it is. Is that what you meant? Um, to me, it means more like I'm, I'm not sure what label to attach to a faith. It's not necessarily doubt that God exists. Okay, so um, you might want to uh, look at the word Gnosticism mm -hmm. 
is the word that this comes from. Agnostic means without knowledge. So it doesn't mean you're without faith, but it means without knowledge. Mm -hmm. It means you don't know if there really is a God. So it, let me ask you this, Heather. Is there really a God? No doubt in your mind about that. Yes. Okay, so you're not an agnostic anymore. Okay. Okay? But, yeah. Not according to the word. Okay. I just mean that I don't belong to any type uh, yeah, of... Yeah, I knew what you meant because I went through the same thing. All right. Okay. The second thing is the God that you believe in absolutely real he created the whole universe mm -hmm. yeah and does he have a purpose for us I believe so okay now you're getting a lot closer to faith than what you think seriously the God that you're just describing right now, is there any room for doubt about the God as far as existence is concerned? No. No. All right. Another, I'm, I'm sorry to give you this like third degree, but I'm trying to help me understand and help you look at yourself from another perspective. Heather, your relationship with this God that you believe in. Do you want it to be that you serve him on his terms or that you want him to serve you on your terms? Of course his terms are better than mine. Huh? Now, his terms, of course, are higher than mine. I, I realize that you probably know the Bible maybe better than I do. Definitely not better than you do. Well, Anyway, in the New Testament, there are two times it mentions what we call the Lord's Prayer. I'm sure you're familiar with it. Yes. And there's a key in there, just like there's a key in the Fatiha that we read, Edina Surat Mustaqim. The key in that one is when it says, God's will be done on earth. As it is in heaven. Perfect. Okay, I knew you yep. knew it. Okay. If you want God's will in your life to be the same way it is that he controls the universe, in Arabic, this is someone who is Mu'aslam. Islam doesn't have a word in English, so we modify it when we try to translate it. Or we just don't even translate it, we just say Islam. Right. Example, in chapter 3 of the Quran, verse 19, it says in Arabic, in Adina in the Lahil Islam. The translator said, for sure, the only religion with God is Islam. I have a problem all the way through the whole thing with the way it's translated, but I have the biggest problem with the last word because it didn't translate it. <laughs> Because if you translate the whole thing more accurately, more on what the Arabic is implying, especially what is intended from Almighty God, the only way of life that God is going to accept from his creatures is the one that he has prescribed for them in service to him, doing his will in surrender, submission, obedience, sincerity, and peace. And it's also related to safety and security, but that's under this one with peace. Mm -hmm. All of those things, would you like to have that in your life? Of course. Now what you just said in English equals, I want to be a Muslim. Doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that I want to be an Indonesian or an Arab, but it means I want to have the best possible relationship that I can with the God that I believe in. And you are very far away from an atheist and very far away from an agnostic, 
but very close to the original message that came with Jesus and Moses and Abraham, David and Suleiman and Adam, and of course Muhammad. This is what I found when I looked at Islam. Had a little trouble admitting I was wrong. That's hard to do, especially for men. I, I think you know that, right? Of course. Yeah. On another, uh, on another note, have you ever been in a car with a man who's driving in circles and he will refuse to get advice? Uh, stop and ask him. Nope, I know where I'm going. All huh? the time. Yeah. 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 That's us. But sometimes you just have to break through it and say, you know what, I'm wrong. I need him to guide me. Have, um, again, a personal question, but in your heart, have you ever asked Almighty God, guide me, guide me? Usually in moments of desperation. But you've done it. I hope, I hope that you don't fall into desperation at a last moment and say it, because then it's too late. But by asking him in your heart, not for my benefit, not for anybody else's benefit, but your own heart with him, silently, God, guide me, guide me. And he will, because there really is a God, there really is a creator, and he's one, the only one that's been there all along. And whether or not I understand who he is or what he is, doesn't matter. What matters is, what do you understand? Does that make sense? That makes sense to me personally, but I'm thinking more like in the greater world view when so many people are fighting about, you know, can you do and this detail, can you do that detail, through, and they don't listen to each other. I've been through that one too. You know what the answer to that one is? Because we are a world of individuals who all have the same right that you do, that I do. They will always be making their choices, some good, some bad. And there's no way that we will ever overtake all the people and change them. But we should change ourselves so that we have the right perspective. He's in charge. And if you want to continue to do what you're doing now, I support it 100%. We should have more dialogues. We should have more people who are concerned that want to help others to know or at least have a chance to explore their own feelings and their own thoughts without some kind of criticism, negative criticism. Right. And I, I support what you're saying 100 percent. If you want to know more and would like to work with our organization, we have over 4,000 websites. But the main ones are shareislam.com, which has a plethora of all kinds of information, and it's done with images, audios, and videos to make it almost like a video game to go through these basic websites. Very easy to manipulate. Shareislam.com. The other website you might like to know about is called Volunteer for Islam. Com. And when you sign up, just let us know that your background a little bit and what you want to do. And by the way, Heather, where do you live now? I live here. I'm an English teacher in Balikpapan. Yeah. And I'm out here telling you how to look at English. <laughs> it's okay. I don't speak Arabic, so that's, that's all new to me. I don't speak Arabic either. I speak Texan, <laughs> boy. All right. Mm. If you take the time and, and effort, I'm sure you're going to find right here in this community, even in this room, a lot of people that share your emotions and your feelings and would love to have a chance for dialogues. And I encourage that. The one thing that we are not allowed to do as Muslims is ever to push somebody to make a decision. Now. If I see somebody standing in the street and a car's coming, I'm going to push them out of the way. But as far as trying to trick somebody into Islam, this is absolutely forbidden. And, or to get them to say something or do something, 
And if you felt like that, that wasn't my purpose. I just wanted you to feel and know that what you are saying, you're not alone in the world. There are a lot of people, even in this room, who share exactly what you say, that I want to know more about my Lord, I want to be closer to my Lord, and I'm ready to open up discussion about it. And I recommend to some of the sisters, maybe if they have organizations, programs here, to invite you over and sit and have some chai. What do you like better, tea or coffee? Oh, both. You, know, you don't have to make that choice. I love that. All right. Heather, thank you for a good question. Thank you for a good conversation. Thank you very much. I enjoyed much. it so much. Appreciate it. Before, before you leave, before you leave the microphone, I wonder if, if I say a prayer, I'll translate it and tell me if you like it. Okay. All right? And if you like it, you can say amen. All right? If not, don't worry. Rabana Atina Fidunya Hassan wa Filakirti Hassan wa Kina Adabanar. We said, Our Lord, give us good in this life. And give us good in the next life. And save us from the punishment of the fire. Are you like that? Amen. Amen. So we have, hold on. We have what's called Fatiha, the opening. You're familiar with the Bible. I'm sure you've heard this. That they said that Jesus said, Seek and you will find. Ask and it will be given to you. What is the rest of it? That would be knocking. Knock and it will be opened. opened. Right? Yes. Okay. Now listen to the, uh, the translation. Well, first, the Arabic, Allah, 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 Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman, Rahim, Maliki, Omidin. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Ihdina siratul mustaqim. Siratul ladina anamta alayhim. Ghayru magdubi alayhim wa ladaulim. The translation could be plus or minus. In the name of Almighty God, the most gracious, the most merciful. All the praise, glory, and thanksgiving is to Allah the most gracious, the most merciful, the owner and ruler on the day of judgment. You only do we worship, and you only do we seek direction, guide us to the straight path, the path of those who have your favor, not the path of those who have your anger or are lost. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You just brought a reality for everybody in this room. You don't know, maybe. This is what we pray five times a day. Actually, 17 times in our five prayers, we're saying these same words. I hope. Inshallah, that all of us will benefit from what you just said amen to. And again, much. congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. And by the way, next time somebody asks you your faith, say I'm more Muslim than anything else because you really are. MashaAllah. Thank you so Thank much. You.